for all of human history, the stars and planets in the sky remained out of reach and untouched by mankind. This all changed on the 1st of March, 1966. This was the day when the Soviet spacecraft Venera 3 crash-landed onto the surface of Venus, becoming the first article of human manufacture to reach another planet. How do we know that it reached the surface of Venus? We don't, actually. Contact was lost weeks before the impact, and the spacecraft has never been heard from since. As far as we know, from the trajectory that it was on when the Soviets lost contact, it should have crash-landed. Like a ship lost at sea, it mindlessly sailed straight into our closest planetary neighbor. This probe was not the only electronic pilgrim in the pioneering age of solar exploration. Here we will explore the Venera Soviet space program. To date, all successful soft landings on the surface of Venus have been from a lander that was part of the Venera program. There is a good chance that Venus started out life in the solar system much like the Earth, that is, relatively habitable and with oceans of liquid water. Assuming this to be the case, Venus then stumbled into the irreversible process of a runaway greenhouse. If so, gases in the atmosphere reflected light and heat back down to the surface. With the sun continuing to shine, the temperature rose. After the temperature rose, Venus's oceans would have begun to evaporate. Water vapor is itself a greenhouse gas, and so would have reflected more heat back down onto the surface. This process would have continued until the oceans had all boiled away. The temperature today on Venus is around 850 degrees Fahrenheit, or 450 degrees Celsius. This makes Venus the hottest planet in the solar system, even hotter than Mercury, despite orbiting closer to the Sun. A thick atmosphere permanently obscures the surface with cloud cover. The pressure on the surface of Venus is equivalent to that of being a half a mile deep in the Earth's ocean. The surface of Venus is therefore hotter than your hottest oven and more pressurized than your best pressure cooker, and by a lot. The extremes on Venus's surface pose significant challenges for remote landing. The oppressive conditions meant that any lander would need to be extremely well insulated. Still, even with the best protection, a lander could not stop the inevitable. In any case, it would only have a matter of minutes before the probe would begin to melt. On the 18th of October, 1967, another lander, Venera 4, sent by the Soviet Union, entered the Venusian atmosphere. 52 kilometers, or 32 miles, above the surface, it released its parachute. Temperatures and pressure readings started reasonably, but soon rose to alarming levels. 26 kilometers into the descent, the transmission terminated. The final readings, reported by the lander, was a temperature of 262 degrees Celsius, 504 degrees Fahrenheit, and a pressure reading of 22 Earth atmospheres. The next spacecraft, Venera 5, was built tougher to withstand the heat and pressure. It sent reported temperatures of 320 degrees Celsius, or 608 degrees Fahrenheit and pressures of 25.8 Earth atmospheres before transmission also failed in mid-descent. Venera 6 was similarly destroyed before the surface could be reached. Venera 7 continued to transmit data up until the moment of impact. At this point, the signal appeared to terminate. Scientists assumed that the probe had been destroyed upon impact or at least had stopped transmitting data after the landing. Fortunately, data was saved 
for the 23 minutes after landing, because it turned out that Venera 7 had indeed continued transmitting information. Weeks later, Oleg Rashiga discovered extremely faint signal which had been transmitted after landing. The best idea to explain this is that the probe bounced and fell back onto the surface on its side. With the medium gain antenna improperly aimed, its transmissions were nearly lost in the noise. The data that was extracted was the first ever data transmitted from the surface of another planet. The reported temperature was 475 degrees Celsius, or 887 degrees Fahrenheit. Venera 7 was equipped with no cameras, and so transmitted no pictures. Venera 8 landed successfully on the 22nd of July, 1972, but also carried no cameras, and after 50 minutes of scientific measurements, data ceased. On October 22, 1975, Venera 9 landed successfully. This time, the lander was equipped with two panoramic cameras. These cameras were mounted on opposite sides of the lander. To withstand the heat and pressure, a 10 millimeter layer of quartz shielded the probe's innards from the opposing elements. The image was further reflected to the camera hidden deep inside. To scan side to side, the mirror directly behind the quartz shield rotated back and forth. Each panorama was designed to be 512 pixels wide and only 128 pixels tall. Still, with the slow rate of data transfer, the probe would take 30 minutes to transmit a single image. Not long after, the probe would certainly be destroyed. To try to capture everything that might be of interest, the cameras were aimed downwards. In this way, the camera could at one point see down to the foot of the lander, but aimed to either side could capture anything as far away as the horizon. This was a horizon to which few pixels could be devoted. To date, the only pictures of the Venusian horizon are distorted and at an angle. A metal lens cap was installed around the quartz pressure shield, which was to be blasted off on the surface with explosives. One of the camera covers failed to eject, but the other one, fortunately, was released. Venera 9 then transmitted the first clear pictures from another planet. Three days later, Venera 9's twin, Venera 10, successfully landed and transmitted more images. Much like with Venera 9, one of the lens caps failed to release upon landing, and only one panorama could be captured. In 1978, two more landers were sent to Venus. Unfortunately, after two soft landings, both probes failed to uncover either of their cameras, and no pictures could be taken. In 1982, Venera 13 and 14 both made successful landings and transmitted full sets of panoramas. These, up till now, have been the only landers to transmit images from the surface of Venus. A striking feature of the Venera panoramas is their extreme similarity despite separation distances of thousands of kilometers. Venera 13 and 14 carried microphones in the hopes of capturing the sounds of lightning. The results were inconclusive. In other words, the sources of what is heard on these sound recordings are not known. These are the sounds of Venus. Thank you.
Thank you for watching. If you enjoy this content and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. Thank you.